Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. What you're looking at here is a part of the arrangement of the base cathode that was used by Henk Guren to make the Vega Valley. And we are here with Henk. So hi, Henk. Hi, Bob. And so we're going to go through how you came up uh, with this cathode arrangement, why, and uh, also we'll have a look at the section of the Vega Valley which went on top, and uh, we'll talk a bit about uh, how in the future videos that led you down a, a uh, experimental pathway and the learning that you've had in between. So let's start with the valley construction itself. Uh, why did you use these copper pipes and why have you got these uh, uh, angle irons of iron there and, and what, what's going on? Yes. Uh, first, you have to understand that this is in the green tank you saw earlier on the video. And I had to do something to create a support in this tank. So I used these copper pipes to make uh, the first support. Then I took this to make the second support to be able to put on this brass plates I got somewhere from a, a scrapyard. Um, so this is fairly it, because the anode would have been somewhere like there, from the top, and I needed this short distance. So, uh, above this, so you, you were pointing there, so exactly. how far above was it? I don't know, maybe five centimeters. Okay. Um, because I, lo I, 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 I made the arrangement that I could lower the anode from the top. I had to start the process, so the distance had to be adjustable. And, and that's it. Um, I made a floor of these pieces of brass and I put these pieces that are over here. Okay, so essentially these pieces had to be cut into these kind of shapes. So no, that you it's, it is, yeah, to get it in the To tank, get it in it, that it, it, opening. It's a leftover mm -hmm. of a big piece. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah. I was a big piece of, of, of brass, I cut in pieces. And the valley itself was sitting in here that's in the middle, the, so that bit yeah. you can't see uh, is where the valley was. But on top of that, in so the valley was coming this way, yes, uh, and actually it made the mark this way. So, yes. and the reason it made that mark is because this was on top. So if we come into a wider shot here, this effectively was folded over on top of the valley itself, and so you have a mirror image of the valley here, right? Yes. And this valley is split in two, and your valley is one piece. Yeah, so if I difference. zoom in here, you'll be able to see that this is actually the mirror of the valley. Yes. And and this is in two pieces, and uh, so what happened was is that the electrode was effectively below this. If, if you flip this over, um, it was below it, and... Uh, the action was actually occurring in the crack between them, right? Yeah, and it was going lower and lower and inside. I could see it in the beginning. I was It was annoying that there was something happening in this opening. And later in the experiment, it I could see something was happening, but I didn't have really problems with it because it was somewhere below. And I could do the other experiments with the around the anode and I could ignore the cathode, but, well, well, this is the result. And so what I'm showing you here uh, is, this again, obviously is the crack between here, so if I put my finger in here, you can see the sort of scale of this. And we've seen these regular spaced plasmoids, these ball lightning form around the uh, anode and in other places. And you can see how regular these are. And it's actually eaten these uh, channels. You can see this wavy line here of how it's eaten it. So it, it was a fairly regular gap. So if you look over here, you can see it's pretty, pretty flat cut. But where it was consuming the material uh, in the process in this gap, and creating these uh, larger ball lightning type structures, yep. um, which led to this overall structure. 
uh, it was in that gap. And then it would appear that it's kind of bled into the areas where you describe this process of hiding, right? Yes, that, that's what it is. It's hiding it. And this is the, the puzzle we have to, to, to resolve. Somehow the energy push from up the cathode, it's, it's from above the cathode. The, 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 there is something energy pushing downwards and it's pushing into the channels. And in the channels, these plasmoids are living, but they're being fed with something, energy. And this is, I think, a very intriguing question. How does this energy get in and get these creatures alive, keep them alive? They will be killed. We've seen all these processes going on. And that's away from the anode. It's hiding, and that's very intriguing. How do they feed each other or what's going on there? Um, and and that, that's, I think, of, uh, 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 we need answers to that question. So we've discussed this a, a fair chunk. And so my, my hypothesis is, if you go and look at Matsumoto's book and he's talking about his one point cold fusion, he's referring to the fact that he chose copper. Uh, this is in the steps of the discovery of electronuclear collapse. He's talking about the copper in his cathode was chosen because copper does not like to absorb hydrogen or adsorb. It, it, it more sticks to the surface, if anything. And also it's highly conductive, which means it has this sea of electrons on the surface. And so when you have, whether it's in a, an electrolytic system like Matsumoto or a gas system like this, you have the electrons coming from your cathode here, and in the environment you've added hydrogen, which is a single, mostly, isotope of an element, protium. And this forms positive ions, which in this case are in the monoatomic hydrogen with an electron stripped from it, is basically a proton. And this comes down, and it can't be adsorbed or effectively or absorbed into the copper, in the case of Matsumoto, and you have the situation where you have this bunching of positive ions coming down and this emission of the sea of electrons. And ordinarily, if that was in free space, there's little chance for any of that to come into sort of equilibrium or, let's say, coherence. But where you have a gap and you have a crack or a surface imperfection. And in Matsumoto, he shows progressive scales of clusters based on uh, imperfections in the surface. So if it's flat, you don't get much. If you get a little dimple, you might get a little size cluster. A bigger dimple, you get a, uh, a much more uh, a, a massive cluster. But if you have a crack, uh, you start to get clusters that involve a lot of uh, electrons and nucleons. And this also speaks to the Ed Storms crack theory and the Georgi Messiats theory. Um, and if you go and look at George Messiats, he basically has all of the methods that you can do this, like using a, a, a inert inclusion, something like uh, quartz or whatever. But quartz, I would argue, is piezoelectric. But anyway, um, the thing is with copper, it will produce an oxide, which is not so relevant in an electrolysis scenario, but in this plasma uh, sort of vacuum, low pressure environment with hydrogen and residual air, it becomes very relevant because you have um, uh, copper oxides forming. And you, you, you know, and we know from analyzing this, that this is copper oxides and it also has zinc oxides. And I've spoke about how they form, um, uh, in the case of copper oxides, photoelectric emissions and in the case of zinc oxides, piezo, uh, which means if you've got vibration in there, there's an opportunity for emissions, and thermoelectric emissions, which means if you have a, a thermal change or stress, you're going to have electric emissions. So you have these things that emit electrons, but also they're all diamagnetic. The copper, the zinc, the, the zinc oxides, the copper oxide, they're diamagnetic. So you have something that not only feeds the beast in the crack, which allows for buildup of the cluster, but the cluster itself uh, is held away from the thing that's feeding it. So it's it's like its own self-containment. 
out in the big wide world of the the vacuum chamber, there's little opportunity for um, coherence to form because things have a large degree of freedom. But in here, it has a much lower degree of freedom, so the cluster can build up. And so if, it, if these are these channels are the result of fluidized electrons, coherent matter, and clusters thereof with uh, proteum, etc., then you can imagine um, that uh, it would be enhanced by these overall set of factors. Now we're going to talk about a little bit more about the gap itself in a separate video. Um, however, the other thing to bear in mind, on the actual Vega Valley itself, when we looked at the channel between them, there was this dendritic fluffy carbon and you can imagine those themselves being electron emitters and there were also what appeared to be on the top of these triangular structures diamonds and the diamonds look like they are synthesized by these processes because we saw them in the Chelani wire and they were seen in cavitation systems by Leclerc and so these kind of coherent systems create diamonds and the interesting thing about diamond itself is it's the best electron emitter itself and it's at the tip of these structures, which are the base cathode, which is underneath this sheet. So you have a whole system that is kind of, it's creating a world that supports the, the structures and allows it to grow. It's almost like a living organism. So we're going to talk a little bit more, not in this video, uh, about um, some things that could be interesting going on with this plate. Um, but uh, just just to say that, um, uh, Henk has been very kind to say keep keep the the valley itself. Uh, he wants to keep this bit, and this is the bit here that we will be looking to either have part of the Kickstarter or to auction off beforehand uh, to help support our work. Okay, so uh, this has all of the main features. It has this uh, mirror image here of the um, the tongue or, or of the sort of uh, the key of the ank here down here um, and this actually here is the over here is the top side of the Vega Valley Eastern Plateau effectively where we saw these toroids of toroids and these iron rich crenellated spheres so there may actually be examples of them on here and we would like to be able to look at this in more detail also so that's what we're looking at here so uh, Hank, do you have things to, to add on that without going into the sort of gap part of the story? Well, no. Uh, for, the, for the time being, I don't think so. I reused materials. We will see later, probably. I don't know if it's in this video, but... Um, the, yeah, there's a gap here. There was another yeah, piece here and there was another piece and over and there. It's been reused probably over mm -hmm. a year. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, and I, I, I think it's important to notice that on the on the support system you can see this white stuff and my statement is hearing the, the stories of Bob that it is calcium it's it there has been lots of transmutation going on that is something we know now and why is this white stuff was the first thing I saw this piece of iron is a little old you can see the rust there in the beginning it was not very good you were not very good able to see these rust spe specks, but I predict this, these are uh, EVOs that have been doing something in this white area. And you actually noticed that, that in this white area here, the white's gone there, and then separately it's been eaten away by subsequent yeah. and, and, impacts. And, and Yes, and later it's starting to rust again, so this white stuff is not rusted, but these specks in there are rusting now. Uh, so there has been lots of stuff going on beneath the plates as well and that's into uh, that's in itself interesting so the whole tank uh, has been full with uh, evo evos running around bunching around because it's under the the sheet okay so um we're going to talk about this not now but in the next video and we'll also talk about uh, uh the uh, aspects of potentially forcing coherence on the uh, brass plates itself. So look forward to that in the next video, but for this one, thank you very much for your time, and we'll see you in the next video.